Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayers from St Peter's Church, Ipsley in Redditch. And it's really great to be with you this morning. My name is Linda Nicholas and I'm part of the ministry team at St Peter's. It's always good to share worship together, isn't it? Now, we'll be continuing today with the thoughts based on the Eddie Askew book and the conversations with God from the book. So we begin this morning with the acclamation of Christ at the dawning of a new day. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. May Christ, the true, the only light, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Blessed are you, creator of all, to you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation. May we rejoice in this day you have made as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep. Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, blessed be God for ever. Amen. And now we come to the first reading, which is Luke 9, verses 28 to 45. Luke 9, 28 to 45. The Transfiguration. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendour, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfilment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and did not tell anyone at that time what they had seen. Jesus heals a demon-possessed boy. The next day, when they had come down from the mountain, 
a large crowd met him. A man in the crowd called out, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son, for he is my only child. A spirit seizes him and he suddenly screams. It throws him into convulsions so that he foams at the mouth. It scarcely ever leaves him and is destroying him. I begged your disciples to drive it out, but they could not. You unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you and put up with you? Bring your son here. Even while the boy was coming, the demon threw him to the ground in a convulsion. But Jesus rebuked the impure spirit, healed the boy and gave him back to his father. And they were all amazed at the greatness of God. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you know, some people can walk quietly and calmly into a situation of confusion, size it up and do something about it. And it's a rare and enviable gift. And Jesus had that gift. He had it. After the exaltation of the experience of the transfiguration on the mountain and the peace of the time in the hills, Jesus was met by a crowd of people. It was a large and curious crowd. Can you imagine the scenes of people pushing and shoving and elbowing all close together, closing in, talking, maybe quarrelling, staring at the Galilean prophet whom they come to see? In the midst all of all of this comes the shouted protest, a criticism of the way his disciples were handling things. A man brings his son who suffers a convulsion. The man shouts, look at my son, your disciples can do nothing. Crowds, noise, heat, criticism, sickness, the disciples helpless, the father disappointed, belligerent. All this going on, but you know, Jesus is competent and in control of the situation, effectively translating the love of God into action by healing the boy and restoring him to his father. Jesus was firmly in control of his own reactions too, surrounded by wonder and admiration for what he had done he gently takes his disciples beyond the immediate, beyond the healing, quietly revealing the fundamental purpose of his presence with them, leading them quietly up to the cross. Not carried away by success, he shared his compassion in full understanding of where it would lead him. And our reading from the Eddie Askew book. Lord, you were always in control. Whatever faced you, human need, suffering and pain, poverty and hunger, doubt and disbelief, anger and hate, the cynicism which says good is evil and twists motives beyond belief. And when people came, anxious, frightened, angry people, not knowing which way to go, you were ready for them, offering love, strength, understanding, comfort, challenge, above all, love. In control, because you saw beyond the immediate, because your father's purposes were clear and real, because 
everything was subordinate to that. And always, in responding to pain and need, you pointed people onwards, beyond the hurt, to the love that never lets us go. Lord, when I'm faced with crisis, with demands on time and attention, when the fingers of panic start to churn and I can't cope. Lord, let me take your hand. Help me to see your eternal purposes within the demands of daily living. Show me the essential beyond the immediate and protect me from being so busy with the urgent that I have no time for the important. And Lord, give me your peace. The second reading today is 1 John 1 verses 5 to 10. 1 John 1 verses 5 to 10. Light and darkness, sin and forgiveness. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his words is not in us. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the biggest problems in our Christian life is dishonesty, not being true to ourselves or God. I will now hide under the desk until it's safe to reappear. It's really a matter of how we see ourselves and how we face up to reality. Transparency is perhaps the greatest opposing force to selfishness, for when we are transparent with our selfishness, we place a magnifying glass upon the pride in our lives. This process can only take place within an honest environment where truth is supremely regarded and refuses to be compromised for the sake of self-protection. We cannot avoid the consequences of sin when our hearts are hardened and unrepentant. That is the essence of darkness living and precisely the target that John is aiming at in shedding light on our sinful nature. John constantly identifies Jesus as light throughout his writings. He writes of Jesus in his gospel, John 1, 4 to 5. In him was life, and the life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. From John's first-hand perspective, Jesus as the light brings to this dark world true knowledge moral purity and a light that shows the very presence of God. God, uh, Jesus does not apologise for the truth that 
he not only represents, but is the very existence of. Rather, he simply offers salvation to those who might believe in him, as recorded in scripture. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8, 12. The essence of hypocritical living is found within a double-minded person who is torn between God and the world. We cannot superficially walk in the light while standing firm in the darkness. We need recognition of sin and a general repentance for the forgiveness of sins. When we are honest to ourselves and God and face up to the life extracting efforts of darkness living and choose to live out God's word through the application of humble hearts, with God's help, our spirits will begin to heal. And I read again from the book. Lord, I don't have to pretend not with you. There isn't really any point in trying to, because you know me better than I know myself. You know all there is of me, the hopes, the joys that come bubbling out when I'm feeling good. The disappointments and failures I try to hide to keep up appearances. The murkiness and mud down there in my subconscious. I like to pretend it isn't there at all, but it swirls and drifts up to the surface, polluting the open beaches of my life like oil patches floating in on the tide. Yet you still love me, Lord. I don't know why. The reason doesn't matter. Theologians may explain it, but I feel it and I rejoice. And because you love me, I can be honest. I can admit the failures, the frustration, and all the things that tie me into knots of pain and make me cry out in anger and hate and shame. And because I bring them to you, you can deal with them, with me. It's such a relief being honest with you, to lose the fear, to know that my honesty doesn't push us apart, but brings us nearer. Because I am loved, I belong. I have a value which no one can take away because you love me with all my thoughts. Let's pray. Lord God, as the light from that first Easter sunrise streams from its distant horizon into our own life and time. We feel its touch, its warmth, its glow, and we draw from its energy, and we begin to see the world around us in a new light, in the light of your love. Help us to walk in this light, in your light. May our actions be in step with our belief, May we walk the talk, may we keep no dark secrets, nor hide anything away, especially not the light you now place within our hearts. Help us too to reach out in the light of love to others, to those who still walk in darkness, to those who need help to see the way. Light up our life, Lord, that we may shine out in love. And we ask in the name of Jesus, who is the light of the world. Amen. We pray for the church, and today we're asked to pray for the parishes of Hagley and Clent, 
as they move towards becoming a new benefice. We pray for a vision for how to develop a pattern of church services following worship on Zoom and for responding to a backlog of weddings and baptisms. And we pray for their clergy, Richard Newton and Kim Topham. We pray for our own church at St Peter's and we thank you for Garth, for his commitment and truth to the gospel message. And we give you thanks for the leaders and speakers for their readiness to serve you. Whilst we discern a vision for the future, we thank you that we can worship you each Sunday on YouTube and in person in church. We pray that our services are acceptable to you. May the words that you have prepared for our leaders and speakers accomplish all that you desire in each heart. May the music bring each one into close fellowship with you. May each one leave the service, whether online or in person, feel closer to you and more prepared to live for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the world. Living God, we ask that you deliver us from a world without justice and a future without mercy. In your mercy, establish justice and in your justice, we remember the mercy revealed to us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we uphold to you those people everywhere in the world who are threatened with violence and insecurity, with no respect for human rights. Those who suffer from forced and violent evictions, removed from their homes and lands without advance notice, consultation or compensation, making them homeless plus destroying their livelihoods. We think of the many people who have no adequate health care, those with no access to clean water and toilets. Lord, as people of the world, we live in seemingly hopeless times where so much is happening. Pandemic, riots, protests, fires and nations divided. In all of this, Lord, let us remember that Christ is our hope, even when all other hope is gone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for all those who are sick in body, mind or spirit. And especially we pray for Reverend Garth that he will continue to heal, be able to sleep and be free from pain. Pray for all those for whom we pray in the catch, for all those families and friends and neighbours known to us, for those with no one to pray for them. We uphold all of these people to you, Lord. We pray that you give them peace in their pain, strength in their weakness and comfort in their sadness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who mourn. God of love and mercy, embrace all those whose hearts today overflow with grief, unanswered questions and such a sense of loss. Grant them space to express their tears and we pray that you hold them close through the coming days, months and years. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we seek to follow you, enable us also to lead others towards you. Shine with the light of your truth upon us, our families, 
our neighbours and our friends. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we say together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord show us mercy. May the Lord grant us peace. May the Lord bring us joy. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me again this morning and I look forward to joining you tomorrow when the readings will be Ephesians 6, 10 to 13 and Luke 24, 13 to 16. So I hope to see you then. Bye.